Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we'll actually be discussing the DAC on the SAM D21 microcontroller. So, the first thing we'll have to look at is actually the functional description of the DAC. According to the data sheet, what the DAC does is it simply converts a digital value located in the data register into an analog voltage on the DAC output which is the V out this will actually be a physical pin on the DAC. Let's take a look let's take a look at the code so you'll understand exactly how we accomplish this. So in our source code we actually have only five steps to use the DAC. Now in the last video we looked at the analog to digital converter the digital to analog converter does the exact opposite of the ADC so whereas the ADC would convert an external voltage from a sensor into a digital format you can understand and store it in the microcontroller memory what the DAC does is it takes some values from the microcontroller um, it can be from memory if you want to do something like generate a sine wave um, you would actually store it on the microcontroller memory and then you can output it on the DAC. This is actually one of the major uses of the DAC which is the conversion you know some digital value into a sine wave usually and you make a song if you want to play back something like a WAV file or you know any type of audio it usually takes the form of a, a sine wave and then you just use the DAC to output the particular um, voltage values for that signal. If we look at the meter for code, that's all the meter for code does is that it takes, you know, our value. In this case, we take the full resolution of the DAC. On the SAM D21, the DAC is um, a 10 bit DAC and it samples around 350,000 samples per second that is verified out the data sheet the DAC is 10 bit 10 bit resolution 350,000 samples a second um, something really important on the DAC is the voltage reference um, we actually use the AVCC as the voltage reference but you can also use an internal voltage reference on the DAC which is actually 1 volt and there's um you can also use an external reference but we just use AVCC to keep things simple so this is how the dock operates you have your input value here um this can be you know your value stored in memory something like a sine wave or in our case you know our um, variable and that data will be input into the data register this data register is a 16-bit wide register now this data um, before it goes into the data register you can also have the option of putting into the data buffer register now this um, this data buffer register we can actually use something like a timer to load data from the data buffer register into the data register there are scenarios when that would be handy but for our purpose, we just need to get this this information from our code on the microcontroller memory. You know, there should have a box here with you know this is from the microcontroller input into a data register, and it then goes into a DAC, and then through an output buffer, um, it will go into our voltage out pin. Now, this voltage out pin on the physical microcontroller. Let's look at the data sheet. If we look at um, the IO pin, it will be P A pin A2 will actually be the voltage output of the DAC. Um, the DAC is one of the few peripherals that you know it really um there really isn't much multiplexing going on as to the section of the output pin. It's actually a fixed output pin. Um and it has to do with the internal operation of the DAC and you know um propagation delays and whatnot that is happening in the internal microcontroller it makes sense to 
actually have a fixed output pin for the DAC due to how a DAC operates. So we take our input, point to this data register into the DAC, we have our output buffer, and then it goes into a um, voltage out pin. You can also put the output of the DAC into the ADC input and um, one to null input but we'll just be using this voltage output selection so um, looking more about the actual um, operation you know you need, to, you need to set up the clocks for the dark and you know actually talk about if we have option to enable the output buffer as I discussed um, you know and this nice little um, formula to calculate the voltage output you know is really handy um, you know we actually can calculate our voltage output by using the value in our data register as well as our selected voltage reference. You know this is where sometimes the um, internal one volt voltage reference come in handy but we won't go into that. Um, you know this is just to give you an idea as to how we'd go about writing code for this from our um, from our data sheet. Um, the register summary we have the control A register, the control B register. This is where we'll keep our focus is also different control and um, for setting interrupts and you know buffer and whatnot. But our main concentration will be on the control A and control B registers. Within the control A register, um, the bit that we really need to focus on is this software reset bit. Now let's look at our code. Um, of course, we must enable the bus clock to use the peripheral as it most peripherals on the cortex m devices we need to enable this bus clock you know then we select the dark clock from that where we really start to get manipulation of the actual peripheral is when we um, manipulate this controller register and we perform our software reset on the um, the dark so the first thing we do is we set the dark to its initial settings and disable the dark this is important because it allows us to disable the dock and then start configuring. So yeah, you see um, in the data sheet, software reset, um, we write a one to um, disable the dock and set initial state. Once this is done, then we can actually start the configuring. So um, if you did my previous videos, you'll notice a trend with configuring these um, peripherals and you'll see it going forward as well. The first thing we do is we actually enable the bus clock and then we actually select the clock for the peripheral. We would usually disable or reset the peripheral, we'd configure it and then we'd use it. So after we reset the dock to its initial settings, we configure the parameters. Our parameter we manipulate the control B register and we select the reference selection as AVCC. If we look in our control B register, we have the option to select our reference. Now, thanks to um, you know the providing of a framework we can actually use, we are able to avoid you know going to much more configuration. You can simply use code that is provided for all these registers that this makes configuring them a lot easier. After we select our voltage reference, we need to enable the external output to the dock. Right, and put the dock output to the um, PA2. After we enable the um, the dock to actually put it to put the output on um, PA2, we actually enable the dock here. Yeah. In our main code all we do is we have a the darkest 10 bit resolution so it runs from 0 to um, 1023 what we actually do is we write this range of values to the dark and what that results in is it results in what we call you know a sawtooth ramp we don't use the buffer features we simply take our value from our variable write it directly to the data register and then it's output on the output pin of the DAC. Thanks to this, we'll actually get a sawtooth that 
has a thousand and twenty four steps. So if you hook up on your oscilloscope, you'll actually see the nice sawtooth on the dock. You know the dock is a pretty straightforward peripheral. Um I really try to keep these videos you know less than um less than ten minutes because thanks to feedback from um you know YouTube analytics most of you all don't watch past um ten minutes so I really tried to keep it in that range only for things like probably the SD card or stuff like that I really try to um, do large in-depth videos but these peripherals are pretty straightforward and I expect that if you're looking at these videos you'll have some type of microcontroller experience so I really just try to um, probably go through the source code probably just clear up things a bit and I just want to say thanks for watching you know be sure to like and subscribe if you if you want me to do any particular projects with the SAMD21, just be sure to like and um, comment below, and I'll see what I can do for you. Okay, so thanks for watching, and stay safe.